Hi, this talk is about rainfall runoff modeling at multiple time scales using LSTMs or long short term memory networks. My name is Martin Gauch, and this work is in collaboration with Frederick Kratzer, Daniel Klotz, Gray Neering, Jimmy Lin, and Zeb Hochreiter. So let's start with a bit of motivation. Um, during flash floods, we have these extremely high peaks of stream flow that are condensed to just a few hours of time. And if we look at that in a hydrograph, it might look actually something like this. So in the orange um, hydrograph, we have the hourly stream flow values, and we see this extremely high peak that lasts for only a couple of time steps, maybe three or four hours. And if we look at the daily hydrograph in blue, uh, we don't even see that peak at all. We see that the stream flow increases a little bit, but um, it would be hard to, to derive from that, from that plot that there is this extremely high peak. And also we couldn't even say when exactly in that um, sort of time period of higher values, the peak actually happened. So that means that in order to generate predictions for these kinds of flash flood events, and maybe also to warn people ahead of time, it's important to generate um, to, or to have models that can generate stream flow predictions at sub daily time scales, such as hourly time scales. Now, um, sort of the naive solution, of course, would be to say, well, we know that LSTMs work, work great for daily stream flow predictions. So let's just do the same thing at the hourly time scale and run an LSTM on hourly input data to generate hourly output data. But as I'll show in the next couple of slides, this is actually not such a great idea. And the reason why that's not such a great idea is um, in part at least grounded in the way that these models generate their predictions, these LSTMs. And the way this works is that we have um, these metrological time series, such as rainfall, radiation, temperature, and so on. And we look at a certain look back period of, of that, of these time series. So during, for daily modeling, Commonly, we use um, one year of data, so 365 days that we process in order to generate one day's prediction. Um, and that works great for daily modeling. But as we go to hourly timescales, um, this one year worth of data actually becomes thousands and thousands of time steps that we need to process in order to generate just that one hourly prediction. So I need to crunch through all these, all these time steps in order to ge generate just one prediction. And so the LSTM, if we train it on hourly data naively, will get extremely slow. And not only will it get extremely slow, but also this, these extremely long time sequences actually make it hard to train the LSTM um, successfully. So learning theory actually tells us that although LSTMs are good for long sequences, if the sequences get too long, it actually gets challenging to get, a, uh, to get a model to train in a stable manner. And in addition to, to this, so, so one thing is um, it gets slow. The second thing is um, it gets harder to train as these sequences get, get extremely long in the hourly resolution. And the third reason is that in, for example, a forecasting setting, um, we might actually have, or we might want to have different lead times for our different models. So for instance, I might have a daily model that has a lead time of a couple of days, whereas my hourly model might only be able to predict um, a couple of hours ahead. And so I would have two different, two distinct setups of LSTMs and nothing in this sort of framework would tell these two models to generate consistent predictions. So we'd end up with two sets of predictions that are most likely not consistent to each other. So if I look at every 24 hourly predictions, they'd probably not be equal or they won't average or sum to that one corresponding daily prediction. Although of course in reality, um, there is only one ground truth. So intuitively there should be one, um, th these two predictions should be consistent to each other. But in the setup, they most likely they won't be because they're, the setups are just distinct. So these are all reasons why the naive solution of just training an LSTM simply on the hourly data um, will actually, uh, will actually no, not work very well. And this is where our proposed solution comes in, uh, which we call multi-timescale LSTM or in short MTS LSTM. And before I go into the actual architecture of how it works, I'd like to give an intuition of, of the way it works. 
And this goes back to the slide that I already showed, where I said that in hourly modeling, we have these extremely long time sequences of thousands of steps that we need to process in order to generate that one prediction. But now the observation is that it certainly matters whether it rained um, you know, yesterday at two o'clock or yesterday at five o'clock. That certainly is important to predict um, the hourly stream flow right now, but it's probably not so important whether it rained uh, say five months ago at two o'clock or five months ago at five o'clock. That's just so long ago that this fine resolution isn't really important anymore. So um, what we can do then is that we, that we leverage this, this property of, of stream flow, that it's, that it's a damped system. So what's long ago, um, or for time steps that are, that are long ago, we can, we can reduce the temporal resolution and still maintain um, a good accuracy of our model. So the way we'll do it is we'll model the, the first part of the time series as um, at a daily resolution. And then only the last couple of days or weeks um, where it actually matters to have that high resolution, those time steps we model at the, at the hourly resolution. And so by doing that, we have compressed this extremely long time sequence in a much shorter time sequence that still contains all the information we need to generate the hourly stream flow prediction. So this is the intuition. Now let's actually look at the, at the architecture of the multi-time scale LSTM. And this starts with just the normal daily LSTM that we already know from you know, several publications. Um, you might know the Kratzer et al. publications that train LSTMs on daily stream flow data. And this way we can already generate a daily prediction just the way we always do this. Um, and then in addition to that, we have this, um, this hourly part of the model. And this works by taking the um, LSTM hidden and cell state from the daily part um, from say today minus seven days, or, or just as an example, let's take seven days. And we take these, these LSTM states and we use them to initialize um, another LSTM here in orange that then processes the remaining time steps at the hourly time scale, at the hourly resolution. So this sort of state transfer acts as a summary of what happened so far so that the hourly LSTM only needs to process the last couple of time steps in order to generate an hourly prediction. So this is kind of similar to what traditional hydrologic models um, would refer to as a warm-up period. So we have the warm-up period on the low resolution, and then we process the, um, the remaining time steps at the hourly resolution. And by that, we can actually train much faster than the naive hourly model because we have these much shorter um, input time sequences. And of course, this, um, this generates to, to any other time scale other than hourly or daily. So we might have other um, time scales. We might also have more than just two time scales. So for instance, we might also be interested in say three hourly predictions. And um, so we could just have another LSTM branch that generates us um, predictions at the three hourly time scale. So it's just adding another branch. It's all happening within one model. And the fact that it's all happening within one model allows us to get back to this um, consistency argument where I said that the naive approach will not or will most likely not have predictions that are consistent across timescales. Now that it's all within one model, we can actually um, use regularization to incentivize the model to generate predictions that are consistent across timescales. So that for instance, every 24 hours, um, average or sum to the corresponding daily prediction. Another nice feature about this multi-timescale LSTM is that we can use different input for input products for the different timescales. So for instance, I might have daily forcings like um, Maurer or Daymat forcings that are just at the daily timescale. I don't have them at the hourly timescale, but I could still use them for the, for the daily LSTM branch. And then I might have other forcings like an LDAS or ERA5 that are at the hourly time scale. So I can actually use those for my hourly LSTM port. And so I can leverage all that information within one model. So the hourly predictions will actually benefit from whatever information is contained even in the daily um, input data. And I might even use things like remote sensing data that I only have in the, in the daily or at some lower frequency 
um, I could also leverage those um, all within this, this framework um, to improve the predictions at, at the different time scales. Okay, um, so this is the architecture. Now let's skip ahead to some results. Uh, starting with the daily results on, on daily predictions, what you see here is the cumulative distribution of Nash Sutcliffe effi efficiencies. And our study uses a benchmark um, on the Camels US data set. So this is about 500 basins across the United States. And our two baselines that you see here are in orange, the US national water model, which is a, um, a process-based model that's actually in production um, in the United States, operationally used. And the blue model is the naive daily LSTM. So no multi-time scale, simply predicting daily values. And if I now add the multi-time scale results, we actually have two flavors of the MTS LSTM. I won't go into detail on that now, but what we see is that um, there is virtually no difference between the multi-time scale LSTM and the naive daily LSTM. So that means that's a very good thing because that tells us that um, we're not losing any accuracy on the daily time scale when we additionally predict hourly values. And we're still much better than the um, national water model. Now, if we go to the hourly results, again, we have the two baselines of the national water model and the hourly LSTM. So that's actually the naive approach of going through all these thousands of time steps to generate the hourly predictions. So it's very slow, um, but it does work quite well. And again, we see that there is virtually no difference between multi-time scale LSTM and naive LSTM in terms of accuracy, but there is a, um, a vast difference in fact um, in, um, in runtime. So we've seen something like a 40 times speed up in inference between multi-time scale LSTM and LSTM. So we can generate the predictions much faster than in the naive way. And we're still much better than the national border model. And now if you look combined at the daily and hourly predictions, what's also interesting is that the process-based model in orange has quite a drop in performance when we go from daily to hourly predictions. So the NSE decreases um, as we increase the, the resolution, the temporal resolution. Um, for the LSTM architectures, there is a small um, decrease in performance also if we go from daily to hourly, but this decrease is much smaller than um, for the national water model. So we can maintain our accuracy at a much higher level actually. Okay. Um, so if you're now wondering if there is a way to actually play around with this a bit and you know, train your own models or evaluate your own models, I'd like to refer you to this um, homepage, which is the documentation of a Python package that we wrote where you'll find the multi-time scale LSTM, but also the normal LSTMs and a bunch of other models uh, together with a number of data sets where you can um, play around and explore a bit what you, what you can actually do with these models. And with that, I'd like to summarize. So we've seen that um, on our benchmark, the multi-time scale LSTM had a much higher NSE than the US national water model. It had um, similar accuracy as the naive way of um, using LSTMs to predict at multiple time scales, but it um, generates these predictions much faster than the naive way. Um, and it also allows us to do um, sort of additional features. So we have this cross time scale consistency where we can incentivize the model to generate predictions that um, are consistent across the different prediction timescales. And we can use uh, different input variables at the different timescales. So if we have a different set of forcings or multiple sets of forcings at a certain timescale, we can leverage all of those different sources of information within one framework um, or within one multi-timescale LSTM. Okay, and with that, I'd like to close and thank you for listening. And of course, you're welcome to join our live session at AGU on December 15 from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you.